heard on stream is your theory that Nero is actually the real Sundere and not Riani. Only I, I because you accused her of being that in chat. But I, yes, I, I, thought I did that, accuse uh... her. She was like, Nero hasn't <laughs> tortured me in a while, and I was hoping he was okay. Not that I care or anything. Literally are the uh, nearly exact words you said. And I was like, I watch anime. I know what's happening here. <laughs> Look, I, I only know about the the various dares because of Arthur giving me like a a, a primer the sheet chart. on them. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Um, but uh, yeah, my understanding of this of the Sundere is they they start off hostile and they they warm up to you over time. So oh, that, so that, much. Listen, <laughs> that is true, but it's so much more complicated than that nowadays because they now have reset Sundares where uh they warm up to you over time and then they go back to being cold and then they slowly <laughs> warm up to you again. That's for really shitty animes where, you know, everything's evergreen and nothing ever changes. Like Seinfeld. <laughs> well, see, yeah. Merc Drakes has called you out as well on chat. Mm -hmm. Wow. <laughs> listen, he just wants to talk shit about Nero. Nero, listen. Nero is my boy, okay? Why are you all coming at my great son? <laughs> what do you got right, for us, so, James? Throw us into the uh, cauldron. Well, I believe that it was. I was throwing you into the to the Doc Masters administrator's office. Perfect. So, uh, pretty much like you, you when you get when you land, you ask see the Doc Master. You walk through to like a uh, a, a small office with like a, a, a wooden desk uh, covered in sheets of paper and Manila envelopes and like a, a, in an out tray which is absolutely stacked with stuff. Filing cabinets around the outside. A little rotating fan on a pedestal. Um, and an overworked looking guy, overweight, overweight, overworked looking guy with thinning hair sitting behind a desk, um, working away. And, uh, he looks up as you come in of oh, Lord Captain, I'm, uh, I'm sorry. I, I just got the memo that you were coming this way, please. Uh, 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 how can I, how can I be of assistance to you? Uh, yes, I would like to file a complaint, uh, but I really just want to discuss as to why I was delayed much longer than what I should have been. Nero's oh. gonna... Sorry, how many chairs are in this room? Uh, probably just the one on either side, of, like one on either side of the desk. So Nero's gonna pull the chair out for the Lord Captain, then pick up the fan and place it so that when it swivels, it only covers the Lord Captain. <laughs> and it's one of those, like, uh, vinyl chairs that's, like, I've got all these holes in it where all the, the fluffing on the inside's coming mm -hmm, out as well. So, mm -hmm. yeah. So... Essentially, he'll sit down in the chair, uh, having his bolter cane like propped up in front of him, his both hands on it, and like one leg swung over his the other. Please enlighten me as to why I was delayed and my business was delayed. Oh um, well, it's just, it's a very busy port here at Footfall, and um, we have to uh, move ships quickly through. Um, many many delays happening. Um, uh, I Everything that you've uh, just said, sir, is a complete contradiction. <clears throat> How can you move ships through quickly if they're having delays? Please, well, if uh, you're going to lie to me, at least do it well. Yeah, Nero's is uh, not pointing the heavy bolter at this guy, but the omniscope is pointed directly at him. <laughs> Yeah. And and it's active, so like you know, there's like a red dot on him while he's talking. All right, uh, give me a, give me a plus forty intimidate roll, Nero, and you can have plus ten for um, Pierre's uh, thing as well. <laughs> so I, I think by the time you get your ship bonus in, you're your maximum plus sixty. So perfect. I mean, I don't know that I can fail on this. At a plus sixty, oh. I have a, a one hundred. Okay, well, let's see how how much how many degrees this is. Isn't like a nine? <laughs> Would I roll like a thirty-seven or something? Yep. Yep. Okay. Thirty-seven. Okay. <laughs> so, um, yeah, he, he certainly is like he's loosening his collar, uh, uh, and he uh, well, he, he turns his computer terminal around and sort of like pulls up his effectively uh, his, his communications data communications, and um, so every single change that came through was sent through from. The, from the the office of like the liege lord of, of, of um, Moros, so um, pretty much every time you sort of said, you know, I want to speak to the manager, I want to escalate it. You know, he sort of said they're asking to escalate it, and Moros has said, move them over to Doc Sixteen instead. You know, and then um, yeah, but Doc Sixteen is 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 currently also occupied or is currently under maintenance. Like, oh, you know, 
move them over there. I'll, I'll, I'll sort something out. And then they're at dock 16. Maintenance is still going. What do I do now? Uh, move them back to dock six again. Uh, so it seems that everything has come from Moros. Tap guy, Moros, sort of, the leash. Yeah, he's just the guy who kind of stayed. He, he agreed that he stayed out of things and doesn't get involved. Okay. Mm -hmm. Do you know where Moros is at the moment? I believe uh, it's pronounced I, Moron, sir. Potato, I potato. Uh, he would probably, he's usually in, he's either in his chambers or in command. Uh, where was his chambers be? Uh, his personal chambers are uh, um, in the central hall. Uh, can't miss the large building. His his home. It's it's quite ostentatious. Um, uh, or command is in the central spire. If you uh, head to the central spire and take the lift up to uh, level two, that's that's command. And where is his, is he typically at command? Uh, well, he's he's quite a, a, a large gentleman. Um, he sort of is, once again, hard to miss where to head into command, sort of in the middle part of it. So remember that Moros is pretty much like a walking tank. His, his whole lower half yeah. has been replaced with, Simonic, with a spider walking sort of tank body. Very well. Don't let him know that we spoke with you about him. I wish to make my visit a surprise for him. All right. He uh, he sort of looks at his clock and is like, "Oh, must be lunchtime then." Let me just turn my computer off. Yes. Uh, <laughs> good good day, uh, to you, Lord Captain. I think uh, Pierre will take out like a <laughs> a bundle of slight change, which is probably about like a thousand or so gelts, yep. and hand to him. And thank you. I pray that the docking will be much easier in the future. Uh, of course, I will facilitate as best I can, Lord Captain. Thank you. Come along, Nero. Nero's gonna stay behind for a moment and say, Doc Master, I would hate for any supply mix ups to happen. Just make sure that everything that's supposed to come on the ship is what's supposed to come on the ship. Uh, yes, yes. Um, uh, on, on, on that subject, there is. Um, uh, there's a marine, an Astartes in in Black Parama, who has been coming by each day asking if the ship is coming yet. Please direct him to a boarding officer at one of our ramps. Uh, he will good. not bother you any further. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you very much. And he waddles off to get lunch. <laughs> It, 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 it's like 9.30 in the morning. Yeah. So. Nero's Omniscope stays on him the whole time, even as Nero turns to follow <clears throat> Pierre. Nero kind of whistles for an armsman to bring the fabled go-kart. <laughs> Golf cart okay. around. <laughs> <laughs> this is what we'll this a... is the this is where we got it from. If you remember, we got it from Tantus. <laughs> uh, we'll have uh, Don sit with us as well, so she can join us. Okay. I imagine that the, the rear bumper sticker is being changed as well, but it's not quite the same size as the old bumper sticker. So there's a bit where the paint is slightly less faded, <laughs> where the old bumper sticker was. <laughs> <laughs> and the, 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 the adhesive tore the paint off. Yeah, that's it, yeah. Or the, just, just the top coat. All right, so uh, you're heading to command? Command, yeah. So along yeah. the way, Nero's just going to be like, look, sir, I know we already did some of our shopping and we just intimidated that guy back there, but what is our plan going into command? Because... I, I'm really certain that I could just like blow that this is a space station I'm fairly certain that I could just blow a hole in the side of command vent everyone into space but I feel like you and Don shouldn't be there for that if it's necessary so we should probably have some kind of plan or like a code word you know like raspberry Uh, how about when... look he's very tough looking right I'm sure that he can't be very good at doing anything at his size but you know there's a lot of him to shoot 
Now you know I'm gonna like hit the head or the chest, but the, the body is robust. The uh, how about the code for we're going to tear this place apart will be do it in our camp. Okay, understood. So that way there's no accidental confusion. Understood. If you say do it in the in in Rogue Trader Cant at any point, I will begin killing everyone in the room. Excellent. Nero starts planning ways to trick Pierre to say and try to kill. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, we need to go to the bathroom in Trader Cant. <laughs> go ahead. Damn. All right. Um, you uh, ride the elevator up. And uh, so it's, it's a busy sort of circular command chamber. Um, it's actually got like a central pit that Moros effectively sits into, uh, which still raises him up above the height of the other consoles. Um, so his, his body actually interfaces with uh, various parts that connect up with, with cables. So he's sort of a part of, at least he receives all the data at a, um, at a mind link level rather than having to sort of be communicated by his staff. But there are also probably about, 30 general duty staff in here working on consoles um probably about eight of the sort of um gene forged guards that you've seen around footfall so these are sort of like um so think of like ogren um they're, they're not quite as blown out of proportion as ogren are. so there's the same sort of height but more of a a natural frame but they're all sort of bald um uh similar of similar appearance um, carrying these sort of um, electric halbard like weapons um, to standing at guard. They don't really talk very much or really move very much for that matter. You're just going to size them up. What kind of level of threat are they? Uh, well, they don't appear to wear any sort of armor. They just appear to wear wearing clothing for one. Um, so unless they've had like, you know, anything subdermal done, um, they probably don't have a lot of resistance to bullets. Uh, they're probably still strong. What about their um, level of readiness and skill? Uh, well, I mean that they basically stand out already. They 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 affect their their bred warriors. It's hard to sort of you know they, they don't they don't get distracted by things. They don't look around or chat to each other. Kind of like a pseudo precursor of a space marine kind of deal. Yeah, is that what I'm understanding? Yeah, so that they, they 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 couldn't be made as space marines now, but they are certainly they they have been gene forged. Right. Just not to the degree that a space marine is. Right. Yeah. Uh, Tanthos looks up as you enter, or Morris. So remember that he has like a, um, you don't see any flesh left on him at all. Um, so although he has like a humanoid torso on top of the, um, on top of the uh, body part, he is still, it's still large, like it's probably about 50% larger than a regular human torso. And then his face is done up like a, like a, gold death mask so his lips don't move when he talks it's just sort of emitted from a, a loud hailer somewhere in his body when he talks lord captain welcome back to port wanda it's always a pleasure to welcome you here i thought this was football sorry it's football correct you were right <laughs> must have been a I long know day. I... <laughs> uh, yes yes it's good to be back though much later than what I was expecting to be. Much delay in sort of going to port. How unfortunate. You're muted. All right, Gandalf, the hour is later than I like. <laughs> wow. The Lord Captain arrives exactly what he means to. <laughs> I was coming here to ask as to why that is. Well, let us simply acknowledge the fact that uh, last time you spent some time on on uh, footfall, that uh, by the actions of your crew, um, there was roughly two hours that I was uh, distracted from my duties, sorting out um, minor turf disputes, complaints from certain mercantile groups that operate on the station groups that i don't generally like to deal with but had to to avoid open problems breaking out on my station so for two hours i was distracted from my duties having to mop up this mess 
And upon your return, it seems, for 10 hours, you were inconvenienced getting on board the station. Perhaps we can acknowledge now that the matter is done and we won't have future problems. Uh, fair enough. Though my man here was only merely doing what the Emperor's work is. Taking in criminals that is set needed to be dealt with. Well, perhaps your man in the future will take more care of uh, where he does the Emperor's work. There is plenty of Emperor's work to be done. Wow, Nero's vibrating with the need to threaten this guy. <laughs> so obvious. Very well. I'm glad to have this misunderstanding cleared up. We'll be leaving you to your work. Enjoy your stay here, Lord Captain. Thank you. Okay, right. let's go. <laughs> does does Nero say anything that... on the ride down? <laughs> I feel like Nero waits for like several seconds before turning to join the Lord Captain. Basically, I want you to imagine that every possible retort is going through his mind and he's vibrating with like death energy and then he turns and leaves. I love the idea that everyone gets in the cart and Dawn's just like, now, I'm not entirely familiar with the comings and goings of what you need to do, Lord Captain, but what in, what was the purpose of that visitation? I figure out what was going on as to why I was delayed. It seems he did not appreciate Nero doing the Emperor's work into his domain. He has a, it seems he has a tendency to let the criminals run a monk into his station. Though out here, it's not much of a surprise. Essentially, he was doing time for time as a sort of lesson to us, apparently. Well, he can give you for five times the times you inconvenienced him for. Yes. Perhaps one day we'll figure out something else to do with that gentleman. So, obviously, the stop on footfall was an opportunity time to do shopping, etc. Um, but there's, unless there's anything else you want to do on footfall, once um, Vitrius, uh, Vitrian, um, Vitrian has uh, has joined the crew with with Shrain. Is there anything else anyone wants to do on Footfall before setting off for Regina 4 again? So there was a promise made by Shrain to Nero that he would enshroud him in some sort of mystical energy to protect him from psychers. And he said that he needed to, I forget whether it was Footfall or Port Wonder, but he needed to be in some location in order to do that. Okay, no worries. Um, was it an offer? I thought it was offered to teach him. I thought it was an offer to like I, effectively. No, no, it's not to teach him. You, you said he would. He said I know some rituals that we can do to protect oh, yes. you. Okay, no worries. Uh, yeah. So while you're here, um, when um, well, actually, probably because he, what he needs is he needs a um, a death watch librarian. Okay. Um, which probably won't be here. Um, Understood. But he can. He can send for one though, and he's willing to do that because he, he's just going to send other messages. So you wanted, he wanted to ask about um, Taylor uh, Taylor Bainwing was one of the questions he was sending up to the Death Watch. Okay. Um, anything else you wanted Shrain to to ask the Death Watch about? Any other books, uh, primer reading material? <laughs> Death Watch, like 101, you know, like first day, this is how you Death Watch. This is our enemy. This is who we fight, and this is why we fight them. Congratulations I, on your purchase of Mark 8 Power Armor. I guess, <laughs> I guess while we're here, just get what 
basis started as to what needs to be sent over to uh Crap, what was the other planet? What was the planet? Oh, Outpost 31. Outpost 31, yes. Yep. So this was for, they needed, uh, what did they need again? They needed... Uh, communications. Upgraded. Okay, no worries. So you can do like, so, so normally it's nine rolls. You can do like up to six of those rolls here. It's only the, it's only the sort of ones that are done um, because you can, save, you can save the achievement points until you actually get there. So if you if there's things like in terms of the well actually analyzing the problems analyzing the issue is probably one of the problems that's harder here, but obtaining the actual equipment is, is easier here. So I would let you do probably three different roles here to get one third of the objective completed while you're here. Okay, that works. Yeah. So this well, would be. Didn't a, a, we didn't we do one of the other the uh, solitude? Didn't we do solitude from uh, Regina Four? Because I thought we. Uh, could. It may have been because they were they were after they, they were low on food I believe was their food was their issue wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. Food, either yeah. way, it's fine. Uh, yeah. yeah I could... Banking. The oh stuff. no, sorry. It's 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 Horfrost that requires um, communications, not not Outpost Thirty One. Sorry. Yes. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we just uh, fixed Outpost Thirty. No. Yes. No. Yeah. Outpost Thirty One. You haven't been to yet. Outpost Thirty One is the research station. Oh uh, yeah. Uh, and Horfrost is the industrial complex that yeah. takes all the takes all the stuff mined by Solitude Station and turns it into into manufactured goods. Right. Yep. All right. No worries. So um, yeah, okay. So we're looking at things like acquisition based stuff. So we're talking about tech tech use, uh, common law tech, um, barter, uh, commerce. Um, uh, any barter, sort of skills it would barter commer, uh, commerce. Um, I don't have anything tech based. Uh, let's have a look at Dawn's common laws. See if she's got any common laws that might be suitable for helping in this one. Common law, imperial, she's, she's got a good intelligence. Lord, rogue trader, Ecclesiarchy, imperial creed, imperium. Yeah, I would. I mean, common law imperium would be fine for the communications infrastructure as well. Okay, well, I have 35 Imperium. I think well, Dawn's will be Dawn, better. Dawn's got 50 plus. You can give her the do, do a better bonus. Yeah, just tell her to do it better. Okay, um, do I add my renowned trader, uh, renowned warrant to these roles? To the commerce tests, yes. And uh, uh, barter, barter is also well. fellowships. Okay. Yeah. So, so what am I make... rolling? So you're doing, uh, Dawn, you're doing Common Law Imperium at uh, plus 10. Okay. Well, they're, they're past, but not too great past. 5.7. Wow. Okay. <laughs> so you, 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 tell, you tell Pierre exactly what he needs. Like, well, a, a, common, a common Imperial installation would have this, 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 and this, and they're clearly missing this. So Pierre knows, knows what to go to the merchant for. So, okay. So that, that, that is going to be 300 points towards that completing that objective. Okay, that's good. Yep. Excellent. Yep. Uh, okay, so um, Shrain comes back. Well, let's okay. Let's actually do. Uh, so this is the same. At one point, you're back on the ship, and Shrain comes to meet with you, um, following his escapade, and he, he's also brought by the Vitrine with him as well. So this is a, another Death Watch Marine. Um, this is the Flesh Terror. So for your benefit, Dawn, um, this guy's shoulder plate shows an image of a circular saw blade with a tear of blood in the middle of it on a black background. Uh, otherwise, his armor looks identical to the uh, armor worn by the guy that was killed before. So um, Death Watch Marines have, a, have their entire um, left arm is rendered in, uh, well, not silver, it's ceramite. Like they, they, they scrape all the paint off, so it's actually a silver left arm and the, and the rest of their armor is black, except for their right bottom, which shows their chapter logo. Yeah. So presumably Shrain's caught all of you together. So I've received some communications back from uh, the Watch Fortress. Uh, first off, um, they believe that the uh, the Necron fleet is very close. Um, they don't have the, the forces to blockade the Jericho Gate from the other side, but it's likely that the Necron fleet will be within the Corona's Expanse probably within two weeks. And then it's just their travel time to reach Regina from there. So 
uh, the time has come to begin mustering whatever forces we plan to we plan to respond to them with. We don't know how fast the ne the Necron ships travel. They don't seem to use warp technology like us. They they seem to navigate real space somehow. Uh, something to do with quantum, I believe, is what the other inquisitor told me. <laughs> Uh, now that name, the Eldar name, Talon uh, Bainwing, uh, it didn't yep. appear in any records um, that we had. Uh, he mentioned you mentioned he was. Uh, did you, I assume you mentioned Kalor was the 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 craft he said he was from. Um, uh, Kalor, well, craft or Kalor is known to uh, to the Death Watch. Uh, they operate both in the expanse here and also in the reach. Um, so it's possible they may have had some previous knowledge of the Jericho warp gate to be in both places. Uh, they are primarily, they, they are not openly hostile towards the interests of humans, except where they intervene in their own interests as such. They don't, they're not like Eldar craft worlds, which seek out conflict with humans regardless. Um, we know that their battle doctrine is built around fast attack vehicles. Um, so mobility, uh, even to the, a greater extent than standard, um, uh, Eldar is, is very high. Um, and we know that their leader is a, uh, Farsi who operates in the Jericho reach. Um, their armor is typically, uh, red with orange and yellow, uh, highlights. Uh, we're not sure what their current sort of objectives or goals are. We haven't uh, had ex excessive communications with them. Is there anything on why he was imprisoned or anything like that? Well, I don't, we said so, so there's no indication, no indication on this particular person. But the room you describe would be consistent with what I would think of from the, the Drakari, the Dark Eldar, which we know definitely operate within the Expanse. Okay. Uh, all right. Um, I mean, like, I guess I would confide in my companions about basically what transpired after receiving this information, I guess. Um, you know, it just goes, yep, he's definitely the young king. What makes you so sure? The Farseer said that you would be contacted or had been contacted obviously time being an issue in the system that we were in you were contacted immediately afterwards by an exarch who is unknown to his people i mean listen i want to be very clear here i don't really give a shit about the eldar but if it pursues the lord captain's goals or the imperium's goals we could attempt to contact this Farseer Serenin and let him know this person exists, what their name is, and uh, anything that you can remember about that particular scenario, establishment. Well, there was a lot of screaming. Um, he said something about me being bright. Outside of everything I've already told you, that's about all that's different. Did I notice anything about the, I don't know, like it, any other contextual clues that might be useful or anything like that? Um, so I said only that, you know, you could describe the cell, which in it sounds online like he's been captured by a dark Eldar somewhere. Okay. Yeah. What areas around here are known to be sort of dark Eldar turf? Uh, so pretty much the further, the further west, you go off so the, f the further rimward you go in the expanse um the the more prolific the uh the the xenos are so both so pretty much the the southwest roughly uh, looking in on the map is where you'd find more dark eldar the northwest is where you would find more orcs is any of my colonies sort of towards the rim area 
Uh, no, so you're you're literally the furthest west colony you have is like the one you the uh, solitude, which is like here. That's as far west as your as, as your mother. She she really focused on yeah, mo and most rogue traders focus on referencing winter scales, realm and foundling worlds. Gotcha. Beyond that, they they're sort of getting so far from so far from health, they start to get a bit worried. Gotcha. Okay. Perhaps we should see, should wait, see if we can get more information, if we can contact this, or we'll contact Don again in the future, see if he can give us more information as to where he is. Of course, so, I mean, um, I can only await him again, so. Yes. Right now we do have the Necrons, it's a pressing matter. It appears we have less time than we had previously thought. I need, mean, sorry, a minute to sort out an Xbox issue for a child. Mm -hmm. oh, of course. Mm -hmm. Very. Thanks. Important. <laughs> so, uh, I want to mention something to the group real quick. In the Warhammer 40k lore, any rogue trader with a warrant of trade who shows up on footfall technically outranks the liege of footfall oh, i do yes so i want to mention that to james because you're currently the only rogue trader in system in your own footfall and i want to out of character say that footfall would make a really nice colony i know you're laughing but consider the uh, following instead of lesser endeavors we could do a multi-episode greater endeavor to like gather up an army after we take on the necrons take like you know take an experienced army that works together and go roll footfall sweep up all the criminals sweep up all the chaos cultists and heretics and uh make it a more pure you know not the casbolica or anybody that we want to <laughs> siphon some bribe money our way but get rid of the riffraff and replace Tanthus Moros, because I would like to blow him into the sun. Yes, I would also like to do that. All right, I'm going to bring it up in character then. That's season two. Season two's entire arc is just conquering footfall arc. Season three, we're all going to be like super grim. We'll be wearing berets for no reason. <laughs> One of us has an eye patch, even though we never got shot. In the <laughs> no, no one ever talks about it or mentions it. <laughs> <laughs> they have an eye patch over one eye and then a scar over the other but nothing is wrong and with then one every eye episode patch it swaps yeah. yeah the scar and the eye patch as well it's like the uh, mole joke in men in tights where the mole is never in the same spot I can't remember that to be honest with you it's been a while it's a very it's not that it's a subtle joke but it's not one that you tend to really pay attention to they don't typically i don't really recall them ever like pointing pointing out in the in the in a scene you kind of just have to watch and notice it. it's just never in the same spot i haven't watched that movie in a while though which is unfortunate Oh man, that's it's yeah. <sighs> Sorry, it's been a long day for me. I can understand. So we're kind of going through the prequels as far as these seasons. Like, uh, this season is called the Necron Menace. Wow. Season two would be the uh, Attack of the Armsmen. Wow, so bad. I hate everything that you're saying. Well, wasn't it you, Arthur, that found that clip of the prequels being named wrong yeah. or something? Attack of the Clones needs to be put somewhere else. <laughs> Season three is, uh, or episode three is obviously Attack of the Clones because it's where the clones attack. 
Yeah. The well, season three for us will be the uh, Revenge of the Warp Smith. <laughs> wow. Wow. We never did get those guns for Nero. <laughs> uh, it's on the list. <clears throat> Next time. Yeah. I'm, I'm slowly working on getting us stuff. It's going to be like every beginning of every set episode before we do anything. Sounds good to me. Let's get some stuff in. Hell yeah. I want to at least get a uh, light power armor for uh, Dawn and the jump pack. I'm going to try to get a, ref uh, a refractor field for myself because I think I'll be the only one that doesn't have one at that point. Boba Fett. Those things are real good. It's, just, it's the one you got, Arthur, like the 50% one. Which one are we talking about? The refractor field. Oh, the refractor field. field. Sorry. Um, I can't remember I exactly remember. what mine does. <clears throat> Uh, there's a summit like 50 and then there's some at like 70. Yeah, mine's basic. The thing, the reason why I had it be good instead of otherwise is because it lowers the chance of failure or something like that. Let me take a yeah, look so at it. Yeah, so mine is, mine is like 50%, but um, it breaks after 10% or something like that. After, yeah, well, you have a good quality, right? Or something like that, yeah. Yeah, yeah so the so same thing that can... I have, yeah, yeah. So basically you roll a D100 and if you roll under 10, it breaks. But if you roll under 50 above 10, it reflects. Yeah. But mine also does like the light shimmer thing. I think it might be different for yours. Mine's just basic. It just blocks period. Yeah, yours story. is probably the, uh, essentially the adaptive store test. Yeah, yeah. Type stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I need to get one for myself and then uh is it like a special storm bolter you're wanting or no but um i you need to I'm combining that. it with uh forearm weapon mountings which increase the difficulty to acquire by plus five and i want to get five of them and so it's basically like a thing i slap on the outside of my armor and then i can just be like does it like turn into like a pistol instead of no, it actually lowers the range by 30%. But the thing is, I only need them for when I can't use my heavy bolter. I can, because I can use them while I'm still holding the heavy bolter. Does it count as a basic weapon still is what I'm asking? Because I can uh, use Yeah, it counts, as, it counts as whatever it is. So I think it's a basic weapon instead of a pistol still. Uh, okay. I apologize. It looks like Xbox Live is down here at the moment. So oh, that sucks. no Fortnite for my son today. That's terrible. So we were asking right, so. what good quality refractor field did. So it changes the yeah. uh, point at which it fails. So a good one only fails on a five or less. Yes. Oh, okay. The okay. other thing you should know is that we're about to have a scene <laughs> where we discuss conquering footfall. For season two. I can't remember what we were doing before then, but... Uh, so uh, you were meeting with the Inquisitor. The Inquisitor was turning up with these. Yes, space correct. Room. We yeah. were talking to uh, not Viridian Vitrian. Yes. yes. Well, so this is well. The Vitrian's just there, but this is the Inquisitor talking to you about yes. these things. Very yeah. well. Okay. Uh, also, I have requested some additional Death Watch Marines to join us, um, including Nero, a librarian that can help you with the matter we discussed before. Fantastic. Are any so of these Death Watch Space Marines going to attempt to blow the ship up? I apologize. I'm a little sore over that. Please forget about it, Inquisitor. My rudeness was... So Are any of them Dark team. Angels? No. Very well. Yeah, we have one kill team arriving. So I will get some information on them for you before they arrive. So you know what to expect. Fantastic. I appreciate the efforts you're going to to help protect me from the perils of the warp. 
and its chairs. Uh, I think that was really all we had that the, 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 I needed to share from what the Inquisition knew. Inquisitor, allow me to ask, how do you feel about Footfall? Do you feel that it's well-managed and necessary part of the local ecology? Would you have any... Um... I, I think that Footfall is indicative of other systems in a similar circumstance, which would just be on the Imperium, yet serve as a, a bastion for operation from. The difficulties there regarding the prolifer proliferation of things like the cold trade um, is a known factor, uh, but it's much like the management of black holes in a ship is that um, even if you take the time to clear them out, you rarely have actually solved the problem itself, which then simply returns. Um, I think that uh, is, this, 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 was, is this something to do with this delay we had about getting off the ship? I, I yes. know it took a long time to dock. Lord Captain, yes. I really, really, really believe that footfall would make a great endeavor, a greater endeavor, one could say, uh, to conquer. Re according to my notes and Wikipedia, <laughs> whatever rogue trader is currently has a warrant of trade, well, that footfall is treated as being higher than the liege of... Um, of footfall according to the compact the rules which were set down for ruling football and yet i have never felt such deference from tanthus moros who is a moron i firmly believe that this colony would be much better off in your hands if we were to eliminate him and some other unsavory elements i've been informed that the local branch of the machine cult is actually a bunch of heretics so I think maybe we could kill them, all the heretics, those witches, kind of clean the place up a little bit, leave the cold trade and the crime, let all those bribes fly your way. You know, yes. maybe you could set up a little death watch office here, Inquisitor. Ultimately, that's a season two problem. Essentially, of course, we yes, delayed. no, we would have to do this after the Necron Menace. Yes. You know, essentially the delays were because uh, a petty... Very a petty. petty attempt to get back to us because Nero was trying to do the Emperor's work, take out some bounties of known criminals. So instead of... So he had us wait 10 hours for his merely inconvenienced two hours. So let me let me just give you one caveat, Lord Captain Master Bullet. Uh, and that is one of the first things you learn in the scholar to become an Inquisitor is not to confuse authority with power. So uh, I could, under my authority, for any reason, including no reason, walk into the command center of Footfall and execute Tantos Moros with no legal recourse. But I can guarantee you that I would not walk out of that room. Um, I so, agree. Yes. Keep in mind that uh, uh, some of the systems that exist in place have much deeper economies behind them that are often not quite as obvious as what you see on the surface. So if you plan to do this, that's obviously within within your remit and within your warrant. Just remember, uh, sometimes things are the way they are for a reason. Not that I encourage you to leave them as they are, just to let you know that you often bite off more than you can see once you start this, once you go down this path. Biting off more than we can see is really just kind of what we do around here. I will take your your advice into heavy consideration. Yes. Again, it's not my main priority at the moment. I would love to get back to him for his inconvenience that he caused, for my inconvenience that he caused me yeah. over some petty thing. I agree. I assume for him, death would not be an inconvenience. He would have quite a vacation. <laughs> Throwing your weight thing. around works all the time until it doesn't. Indeed. I'm not saying, Inquisitor, that we need to just walk in there and kill him. I'm talking about a full-on uh, revolution replacing key unsavory elements. Not everyone. We're... we're uh, Casbalica aligned? Did we let those people off of our ship yet? I feel like we definitely should if we didn't. We, we <laughs> certainly made a deal with them. 
But the mercenaries are staying on there. So are they? Are they? I thought the mercenaries were happy to stay on for you. They're, they're happy sure. to be employed. Yep. Oh, absolutely. Oh, I thought they're oh, okay. So they're... Yeah. All right. So, but we're letting all of the Kesbalica researchers and uh, miners and such go. Aside yep. from the one that we hired, essentially. Yes. Yep. Because I liked her. She was nice. Uh, the question is, like, we should probably talk to the Kesbalica while we're here, at least briefly, because we. Just, I wouldn't say we stole a bunch of their stuff, but we did. Flame it. They so should you also had met before with the Dame Takar, who is the Casbalica representative on Port Wanda. Correct. On Portfall, sorry. Yeah. Lord Captain, I don't know if we should be discussing this in front of an Inquisitor, but they do owe us for saving them and preventing the Eternal Praetorium from exploding in a Xenos infested explosion. We can attempt to have a meeting scheduled for them. I don't know if we'll get it at the moment. All right. I want you to be clear. There's like a bright, shining look in Nero's eyes when you say schedule meeting. <laughs> it's like it's like a keyword. <laughs> I'll be right on it. <laughs> you know, there's nothing I love more than making sure everyone's on the same page six or seven times a day. Yes, yes, I know. When Nero one day becomes an Arco Fletcher, that will be his activation phrase. Schedule a meeting. <laughs> Schedule a meeting. Yes. Uh, we hired Zephyr, right? Adep Zephyr, the archaeologist. Yes. Okay, and we've got the mercenaries. All right, they're with us now, too. All right. That's all I have, Lord Captain. If we can get a meeting with the Casbalica before we leave, that's one thing, and... You know, it's not like I like them. They are filthy criminals, but they have their uses. It's your choice who to do business with. I would like that ship. I don't the think Eternal Praetorium? I suspect you're going to need to speak with uh, Lord Captain Wintersgale as well. He yes. might have some choice words for you about it. At least currently no one can claim it at the moment. I would say, Lord Captain, uh, finders, keepers, losers, weepers, and possession is nine-tenths of the law. Has worked out pretty well for rogue traders in the past. I heard your mother this... say it more than once, both phrases. <laughs> right I before executing they... a man. The issue is, is they found it before me, but of course, it is still in their system. No, that the Eternal Praetorium was the ship that the Kesbalica chartered to get there. And it's currently stuck into a gravitational loop that has caused it to burn out its own engine, so perhaps it'd be more trouble for them than it's worth. Perhaps. I mean, here and now would be the place to uh, hire a tug. Uh, would I know what the effort would be to hire a tug for such a cruiser? So effectively what you're doing is you're hiring, you're hiring the services of a ship, which is small enough to not be affected as badly by the, um, by uh, the gravitational, pull by the gravitational field. Enough, yep. Big enough to uh, get it out of. Big enough to get out. Exactly right. Now, first off, the only issue there is it's probably unlikely to be a ship that's big enough to have a warp drive. So you really need two ships. You need a ship to the ship. You need a system ship that can tug it, and you need a warp capable ship that can effectively drag the system ship through the warp. Which you, you could you, you, obviously the Hannah Clixes could be the ship that takes the tug there. We'll tow chain um, them. Then they'll tow chain the Eternal Praetorium. Pretty much, yeah, yeah. Because ships without warp drives kind of the warp have got gala fields, but a ship with a gala field can extend its gala field around another ship. Yeah. Okay. This sounds like another season two issue, which would be fine. Because I don't know how much, how many months has it been? So is, is it like two or three months before the Necron's supposed to get there? No, it's probably about more like one or one or two months, isn't it? Yeah, it's been about six weeks. Okay. So that's, that's a season two problem after the uh, Necron menace. 
Um, I mean, you, you could certainly, you, I mean, what you could do is you could effectively hire two ships. You could hire a ship to take a tug there and a tug to get it out. It's going to cost you profit factor to do that. Like as in probably to, to gain that ship, it will cost you a permanent investment of profit factor for that, that exercise. Uh, okay. But it will be done, it will be done qu quickly and without the need for player intervention. It doesn't solve the, the legal issue of who the ship belongs to just yet. Um, right now, the Inquisitor's got that locked up by effectively... Yes, the, because the, there's a there. current... There's still the alien... The Xenos infestation still on it. Yeah, open investigation, basically. Gotcha. Yeah, so you can solve yeah. the legal... If you solve the legal side first, then that makes the whole thing a lot easier. Yeah, it sounds like it's season two problems. So. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I'll I'll see if I can get a message out saying uh, for uh, winter scale at some point to have a discussion. Okay, no worries. You do know, by the way, that the road trader Jonquin Jonquin Saul owns a number of sh um, ship tugs along with the rest of his fleet. Okay. So yeah. Um, so did you want to do a meeting with, um, Vladim Takara of the Kaspalika? Sure. All right. No worries. Uh, so you, uh, Minera puts out the feelers, uh, is able to sort of, yeah, he, he's, he's readily, he's waiting, he's waiting for your call pretty much. So, uh, it's easy to schedule a meeting. Uh, did you want to bring him to the hand of Calixus or do it on, on, uh, footfall? Uh, I'll say whichever he prefers. Oh, he's a relatively busy man. So if you're okay to come to Footfall, he'd rather do it on Footfall. Okay, we'll go to him. All right. Don, you want to come to a meeting with a crime lord? Would I be of much use if the answer is yes, then absolutely. You're better at, you know, reading people or stabbing people, prolicitizing people, investigation. Well, do you think I'll be of use? You have a wide and breadth of knowledge, better command of the high Gothic language. So it sounds like you want me to come. I'll gladly assist you. I mean, if yes. you're not busy. Yes, I need you to call out any bullshit lies he gives me. Yeah, that too. He was pretty friendly last well. time we talked to him, though. Useful. We did help some of his business. I'll try not to call them the Kazbalikers, though. It's going to be tough. Now that I've said it, I just... I can't think... I, it's stuck in my mind. Why'd you do that? Now it's stuck in mine. Good. <laughs> Nero, Nero flats the pedal down on the golf cart, so it's going like 16.3 miles an hour. <clears throat> okay, so uh, you... <clears throat> He always like a meeting in, in basically private private chambers. Um, so it's, it just he turns up. He doesn't bring any sort of guards along. Um, so for your benefit, Dawn, if the dame is a um, mid height, uh, skinny man uh, with a bald head and obvious cybernetic enhancements on his head. So he has a cybernetic eye, um, and then sort of that, that extends around to the back of his head with extra components. Um, he dresses in like a like a mandarin collared. Uh, like long suit um, and ha has sort of like a very professional air about him. Like I, I, for me, he's been inspired by the Robert DeVal character from the Godfather. He's like the mob lawyer, you know, so he's not involved in crime himself. He's not actually doing anything wrong, except he is facilitating crime for his employers. Um, uh, and that's really where he, from the point he comes from. Uh, mm -hmm. And he, he welcomes you in and, and offers you all chairs. Right. And when he when he sees Dawn, he says, oh, I, I don't believe we've met before. I am for Dame Takara. And he like offers his hand. Uh, I um is it like a handshake or like Yeah, like a handshake, yeah. Well, I mean uh, okay. it depends. So uh, if you're probably in like sort of full regalia, like you're you're sort of clerical regalia, he'll probably like, you know, put his hand out to hold like in a, like I'll hold your hand to kiss it sort of thing. If you're more like in armor, it's probably just more of a handshake. Um, I'll just uh, give him a, a, a curtsy and I was like, it's, like uh, it's a pleasure to meet you. My name is Sister Confessor Dawn of the Cleansing Flame. Please have a drink. I have some chilled water here for you. Um, I believe, Lord Captain, that um, the Kasbalika owes you some thanks 
you uh, helped to uh, resolve a, a effectively a lost mission. Nero's smirking so <laughs> hard right now. Yes, it was quite a uh, experience. They, it seems that a, one of the people among the ship were harboring a artifact of some sort that causes genetic splicing. A uh, halo device. Drew, yes. Which drew together a whole bunch of other, the same Xenos, et cetera, et cetera. We killed them. Well, we didn't kill most of the Xenos, just the one that harbored the device, et cetera, et cetera. Let me, um, I, I want to first off assuage any concerns that you may have that the Casbalica is not at all interested in the trafficking of Halo devices. We understand how dangerous they are to the Imperium. Yeah, it's rolling his eyes. That's not something that we, I mean, the cold trade is one thing, Halo devices are a whole other. So uh, I, I, once again, thank you for resolving that. And also my employers are uh, aware that uh, True benevolence doesn't really exist. That nobody, nobody does anybody's favors without expecting something in return. So, allow me to ask, um, what is it that you uh, envision uh, you would like out of this this assistance that you've offered us that you provided? We'd like to ensure that you are appropriately compensated for what you've done. To be honest, I'd prefer to have that cruiser that's currently stuck into the gravitational pull of those planets. And along with, and also has the issue that its plasma drive is completely shot because they attempted to get out of their stuck nature. Mm. The eternal Praetorian you're talking about. Yes. Here. Uh, I, so from my point of view, representing the Kasbalika, I don't think there would be a problem here. Um, I think that, so really it's that there, there are four interested parties here. Um, so the, there is the fact that the ship belonged to the Mechanicus Explorator fleet and was salvaged by our group. Um, but you, as you probably know, that particular Explorator fleet has a particular view on ownership, which doesn't necessarily gel with everybody else. Pretty much if it contains mechanical components, it's ours. It's pretty much their view of things. Yes. There's a fact that, that our group salvaged it, but in many ways, our group is not recognized as a legal entity which can really own a, uh, a void ship, which is for the most part why we operated it outside of uh, regular channels, so to speak. Um, then there is the fact that the ship or the region in which it was um, abandoned and, and where we were using it does belong to Caligus Winter Scale. Uh, and as a abandoned ship, he has a right to claim it, obviously. Although, in a, in a region of his realm that has not been visited by him in his lifetime, only by his, I think his grandfather is the most recent who have visited that system. And then lastly, of course, is yourself, uh, who has now, or is a position to salvage a ship right now. Uh, personally, my feeling is that yours is a stronger claim. Um, you literally control the circumstances of the ship right now. So uh, any, any attempt to gain control of the ship by anyone other than you requires some sort of legal challenge. Um, where yeah, yes. right now, the only person that can fire the ship away is yourself. Uh, so I, while I think that, uh, and I'm not, I'm not trying to be rude here. This is, I'm just talking as a businessman here. While I, I would say that the service that you rendered to the Casbalica, while exceptional, was not of a value equal to a cruiser that the Casbalica would be willing to um, uh, to ha hand over all knowledge and control of that ship to you, even assist you in recovering it, on the understanding that the balance of uh, arrangement in this in this particular friendship is has swung our, our way a little bit for a little while. That um, do the explorators know where that ship is at the moment? No, no, that's certainly been not something, not something that we've shared with them for the reasons I outlined above. That's quite unfortunate because I do have some contacts with explorators that I have as they have come upon one of my colonies and are looking for something. I'm sure they would love to know that that ship is there so they can possibly get it back and fix it. 
Well, and it, and of course, if if you were to to inform them of that, and they would they would go to collect it, I would probably say that they would have the stronger claim then, and you would be out a cruiser. Right. I'm currently yes. out of cruiser anyway. You say that the balance swings. Are you aware of the circumstances of the actions of members of that group? Uh, I haven't read the debrief fully from the people that, that got off your ship. They only, they only arrived this morning, obviously. Uh, others in higher positions are debriefing them. Um, perhaps, you could in, perhaps you could enlighten me. The overseer, Lyris, attempted to kill the Lord Captain and key members of the crew. drawing him into an ambush by uh, being infected by the Halo device. His handling of this device as the leader of your expedition, his attempt against the Lord Captain's life, Sister Dawn here was forced to reform him spiritually. I would hate for you to not take these very serious events as a representative of the Kasbalika who perpetrated them into the balance of power. I, I'm confident that um, the actions of Overseer Lyris were Lyris's actions. And uh, I, I wouldn't want you to think that they represent the attitude of the Kasbalika towards your, towards your family. I understand. Uh, so you, you take no responsibility for members of your crew. The way I can see what Lyris' actions were were not one of his own, because he knew the threats of this Halo field. And the fact that the Kas shoot. Kasbalika. Got him. Got him. <laughs> <laughs> the fact that the Kasbalika wanted this device, because they probably had someone that had was wanting to pay a high price for it. So currently, I really have very little to believe that you actually didn't want the device. As if you didn't, you would have destroyed it immediately, knowing the threat, as you so claim right now. Am I to understand this right? So I need to reiterate once again that the Kasbalika, we, we like everyone else, fears what would happen if a Halo device made its way into the Imperium? It is an infectious device. It is, co is a coveted device. There, as I said before, there are plenty of things that we can pull from the ground in the, in the Expanse that sell well in the Imperium, yet pose no threat to mankind. A Halo device is not that such a device. It is a threat to mankind. If Lyris found a Halo device and didn't destroy it, it wasn't because of orders that he had from the Kasbalika. It's because of what he sought to do. This is the issue, is that the leader of your expedition, whether under your orders or not, has caused quite a bit of problems for all present, including yourself. How much is this man lying to me at the moment? <laughs> well, that's a good uh, question. Yeah, so give me a... Uh, this is when I value. scream insight check. Yeah. This is when um, we all turn to Sister Dawn and wait for her to pull out a, a, a D100 and roll it onto the guy's desk. <laughs> it's, a, it's a scrutiny check. Could she have a plus 10 to it? Because I pretty much brought her here to do said job. Well, she's not trained in scrutiny, so you're actually you're actually better than her with, with plus 10. Well, shit. <laughs> uh, I don't have a plus 10. Yeah, but still, the only thing 12, I can offer a, is I got fate to burn, my dude. Yeah. That's about she's it. She's a twelve base, <laughs> so plus ten is twenty is twenty two. You've got thirty five base. Oh well, okay. Uh, no modifiers. Um, well, normally because it's an opposed test, there's no modifiers on an opposed test. Oh, okay. Uh, I'll go ahead and spend a fate point because it's a fail to fail. Yeah. Uh, I'll spend another fate point to add a degree of success to that. To make a two-day success? Okay. Yeah. So he is being genuine in saying that the Kasbalika don't, they don't trade in Halo devices. Um, like he honestly believes that if, that if um, Lyris had, had gotten his hands on one and was trying to do something with it, that was, it was up to Lyris. See, there's certainly, he's certainly got the attitude that like, you know, it's unfortunate that you guys decided that Lyris needed to die 
you know, before we can actually ask him any questions, they'd, they'd like to know more no, about what happened. Lyris is alive. Oh, no, so he's, he's, he's alive, sorry. Yeah. That's right. But he's, yeah, know. we set him on fire and he lived. That's right. He did survive. But anyway, um, but I, I don't know. Have you released Lyris into their care now? Or I thought you were sort of That's you were up keeping to Sister Dawn. As, as, a, as a possibility to. I mean, I mean the, he has a negative so, trait as an administrator because he's corrupt as fuck. So yeah. he's of zero use to us. Well, it's positive and negative. It's got a bonus and penalty. He's free to go as he pleases. Most people who survive the cleansing tend to stick around on their own accord anyway, so it's up to him, really. Yeah, I mean, i, I got to be very clear. The reason that Lyra survived the cleansing is because he has ridiculous, ridiculous toughness. Um, so. <laughs> no, I understand. Um, yeah. But as, as you know, as Dawn believes, like... Um, that's just that's just how it goes. So he's free to do whatever he likes, I guess. So yeah. So he will pro he will probably leave um, if he's not if he's not being offered a position as, as an administrator somewhere. He will probably leave. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So corrupt corrupt. That's right. It's plus plus two productivity minus one order. Yeah. So we it, we just got rid of someone that gave a minus one <laughs> to something. Yeah. Minus one piety for being vainglorious. Um, in any case, this guy honestly does not believe that, um, in fact, probably you can read that if Lyris is free to go, that the Kasbalika will probably want to disappear in pretty quickly to avoid any sort of embarrassment. Yeah. That's, okay. Listen, that is what I'm trying to get the, like, he's like, you owe us. And I'm like, no, you forgot that this guy really fucked with us really bad. Yeah. Well... I see that you're genuine. That's a good sign. I foresee that this legal battle is going to be longer than we all anticipate, because again, as you said, that there's been multiple parties wanting that ship. The one thing we do want to know is that the only one we don't want to know is the, the explorators, for they will Claim it themselves without even us being able to tell them otherwise. Hmm. This is why I think that uh, your legal position could be even further enhanced if we were to throw in our, effectively throw our claim behind yours. Indeed. I, I, do... honestly, I, don't, I don't see a circumstance where the Casbalica ends up with this ship. Oh, let's be I perfectly understand. honest. Yeah. But what I do want to ensure is that we. Uh, we help somebody do that so that you know we can we can still reap some benefit of it. You're saying you would like a further good business relationship with the Lord Captain. Indeed, that is always our goal. I have a question. What is the Casbelica's thoughts as far as selling blanks? Selling blanks, blank what? Nulls. Nulls. Sorry. No. Oh, as in like human pariahs. Yes. Yes. Uh, I don't know that it's ever really a trade we've considered, given the the vast rarity of. I mean, I currently slavery, slavery is a difficult business. Could you I find understand. buyers for such merchandise? Uh, well, they're perfectly legal, probably... of course. Yeah. There's nothing against these. Uh, so Nero doesn't believe in slavery, so it's actually really yes. tough, but he's going to say these objects, perfectly legal mm -hmm. to sell within the Imperium, a very normal trade for a businessman like yourself and your organization. Uh, the, the blessings of legitimacy. I have... I have a, an interesting situation where I actually have decent access to gnolls. A much what are we talking larger here, number. Like five, six. Add a couple of zeros to that. Oh, he spits his water out. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I, I don't, I don't understand. But okay, to keep, keep, keep talking. They are of use to some people, as they, though they do have unsettling aura to them, as some may know. I've experienced this for it. 
Currently, I have a colony that has a alarming number of gnolls that I would be interested in finding employment for them, so to speak. Prisoners with jobs. <laughs> yes. That I would need to, I don't, I don't know, I can't answer that question right now. I would need to go back and speak to others and, and make further investigations. The one That's thing I would fine. hate to see, I, all I would ask is that while I consider this, that you do not make the same pitch to the Red Scholar. I, I, I feel that the Red Scholar in have, will get, getting their hands on a multitude of blanks would be difficult for everyone involved. Uh out of character, Red Scholar. Does that ring any bells? The Red Scholar are the slave traders on on Footfall. Um, okay. And what they what they tend to do is they tend to um, take slaves and then um, build them up into like lobotomized warriors. And so sell these them guys off. would eat these nulls up. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> I can make that promise. This is just a mere offering as to some of the deals that we can make. Very benevolent, Lord Captain. I would too would like to form a good working relationship between uh, myself and the Cabalica. Incredible business opportunity, really. So much wealth on the table. Well, certainly we would have very much appreciate the fact that you have brought this opportunity to us first and would give us an early chance to, to establish exclusivity. Yes. Is there anything else you wish to discuss with us? I believe we've got anything that we needed to know. Uh, I only just to say that um, obviously your, your mother had a reputation for uh, lucky finds, so to speak. Uh, she brought a lot of technology back into the Imperium um, and has gained a friendship with the Mechanicus by result. Uh, lucky finds is something we're also interested in as well, should you continue your mother's luck. Um, yeah, we, we'd at least, at least like a chance to make a make an, an offer as well as what the Mechanicus offers. You're offering sure to match their price. I'm offering to better their price. Nero's going to give the Lord Captain a look. I'll be sure to have anything as sort of particular value to you all as first dibs. Well, <laughs> he holds up a glass of water. A toast to uh, our continued friendship. Indeed, a toast. You'll do the same. Mm -hmm. He then will. He, you guys leave eventually. Yep. Yes. There's no further discussion to have. Clean up his spit take. <laughs> <laughs> Nero's going to turn to Don on the journey back and be like, "Sorry, I don't know that you were of the best help in there, but you know, you never know when you're going to need someone very intelligent." I'm just a casual observer. I'll be here when my role is necessary. I mean, with rolls like scrutiny, everybody could roll as well. It doesn't take... It's not only one person to roll. So. <laughs> Sorry, James. I, I thought I heard you say anyone could try. Yes. Try and fail. Yeah, yeah. That's Nero's scrutiny. Come on. It's uh, not good. It's higher than Dawn's. Come on. Still it's not 15. good. <laughs> 15. Yeah, that one in seven chance. Where did My this bad. idea come from... That Dawn is good at scrutiny. Doesn't she have good sudden, inquiry and logic and stuff like that? Well, inquiry is based off of fellowship. I thought she had yeah. good awareness. Oh, yeah. That's what I was basing it off of. Look, Nero just good. assumes that Dawn is smarter than him in every way. I mean, my intelligence, I think, is the highest of everyone here. Yeah, but she's, she's got the lowest perception, though. She's inwardly focused. Uh, rogue, uh, rogue traders aren't paid to be intelligent, it seems. That's right. Rogue, rogue traders aren't paid, period. <laughs> Actually, no, the intelligence is one of the easier ones to get. I'm wrong. They're not, they're not paid to be very strong or tough. That's what they're not paid to do. <laughs> intelligence tells you it's raining. Wisdom tells you you should go inside. <laughs> the fruit salad metaphor. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> 
All right. So I think that's probably it for for um, for uh, footfall. Yes. I've got nothing else. Okay. So I think that what we might do is we might just work out the warp travel to Regina Four. I probably won't start Regina Four stuff this session, which we may end up with a, a slightly early normal finish, which Dave won't that's mind. Fine. So Dave can get to bed. But let's just work out yeah, if there's um, any warp shenanigans to happen. Yeah. Um, all right. So immediately after this, I'm I'm streaming Sea of Thieves. So. Okay. So let's let's mix up the roles this time. Let's let's let Arthur do the the uh, perception oh, roll first. Oh shit. Yeah. So it doesn't make you roll nines here. Roll as many nines as you like. Uh, so this one <laughs> is uh, the 55 plus 10 for Pierre. So 65 is a chance on the perception roll. Nope. Okay, no worries. So it's, it's minus one degree, sis. That's fine. That means it, that means it will take one and a quarter time to get there. Um, no okay, nines, then we though. need to do... No nine. Well, that's, there's no, this one doesn't matter for nines. Okay, then we need to do the uh, charting the course. So this is a warp navigation roll, which we'll give this one to Dave to do today, I think. This is the same so, one we had before. So we, okay, well let's do, okay, let's give it to Pondo then. So da so Dave can not roll nines then. All right. So Pondo, so you're rolling to chart the course, which is a warp good. navigation plus ten roll. So and you can then do that with your do it better, which is um, going to be a fifty percent chance. Okay, uh, twenty-four. So okay, that's all good. And then Dave, you can something do, degree of success. Dave can do steering the vessel. So this one is a uh, warp navigation test modified by the result of the first test. So that's a minus ten. So Dave, you're rolling under forty for this last test, and don't roll any nines. Ninety-nine. Okay, okay. so it's going to take you a long time and be a rough journey. Uh, Dave, would you please roll me two d one hundred? It's going to be 8 and 10. Okay, there's 88, which that sounds good. Yep, 88 and 19. Okay, so your options there are all clear or... So what was it? Uh, no, I think we're good. Nope, I think or that's lost, we're good. Or lost time. <laughs> we're going to go with all clear. Yeah, all's well. I don't know. <laughs> Coming out as 50-year-old uh, people at the end of this might be pretty fun. <laughs> Yeah, so with those roles, it's going, to, it's going to take you about two weeks to get there, which means that by the, when you reach Regina, you're about four weeks away from the Necron's arrival. Okay. Okay, so you, you might find, given the, the travel times, that you are pretty much, your characters are stuck here until that until it happens now. So I think by now I should get, uh, I think by now I should have gotten my light power armor for me yeah i think the things that were being sent have, have been have, would have arrived now certainly the I, things you bought that then would, would be arriving now yeah i think nero's heavy armor was my heavy be... armor is not going to arrive until the day before the fight begins yeah. oh nice <laughs> that's what we agreed on yeah yep yep uh but does his refractor field arrive on yes it does okay yeah yeah uh, so he's now wearing his uh, Flavor Flav clock at all times. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, it looks adorable. super out of place in the rest of his outfit. <laughs> <laughs> so ridiculous. What you should do is you should try like use Microsoft Paint to draw it onto the character <laughs> art so it, looks, so it stands Photoshop. out. Photoshop. Like yeah. <laughs> no, 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 no. Microsoft Paint. Oh, okay, it, got it. Like, yeah. The, yeah. <laughs> the quality of Low the artwork on top of. <laughs> Um, so yeah, so let's leave it there tonight. Um, thoughts, concerns, comments, criticisms. Can't wait to take over footfall. You know, get the Kazbalka on our side. Get a large mercenary army. Get some loyal armies. Maybe blank up the whole place. Can be awfully hard for those seven witches to do anything when we surround their sanctum with nulls. Uh, and you know, get rid of the heretics and uh. Traders, Tanthus Morris fans, take it over. Get the graft, you know. Charge all rogue traders like one percent on all purchases. <laughs> Cash back directly to the Lord <laughs> Lord's pocket. <clears throat> I think uh, I, I, I'd, I'd like to acknowledge that tonight's game was completely thrown off rails by that that warp 
navigation test that resulted in visitations. Yes. And then I just then I, then I put out, oh, the Inquisitor wants to go to, to Virginia. And you're like, okay, well, let's let's not go to where we were going before then, which is funny because I wrote the entire thing for where you were going before. <laughs> then I realized later on it was actually not where you were going because you were going to the to the place that required infrastructure, yes. uh, which which is Horfrost. Uh, and I and I had. I had it down that you were going to uh, Outpost, Outpost 31. 31. Don't yeah, worry. That's right, we'll go to all of them eventually. S- eventually season 2. That's right. I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll, don't worry, I'll get to use it again. That's fine. Season no 2 opening well. is this scenario for Outpost 31. <laughs> we show up and you're going to be like, all right, all of the threats you're facing are, are strong enough that you could have defeated them back in Season 1. <laughs> Good tutorial mission to remind us how seasons work. Yeah. So everyone does get 300 XP, which should now mean that you can... If you spend it all, you should be able to spend some at least 100 points of it into... Does that put you over 10,000 now? It does, yeah. We're only 200 yeah. off from that, I there think. There you go. Yeah. So is it 300? Yeah. 300, yeah. It should put us at 10,100 if we spend it all. Yeah. So if you happen to have... May I spend exactly 10,000, you could spend 100 into rank 3 advances, although I think most rank 3 tough. advances yeah. are higher than that. And I know that Dawn's uh, got like 50 points flying somewhere. Yeah. Oh, you can you can plan for what you want to do next time because yeah, they do start from two hundred. I mean, next yeah, episode. I find it really hard with with this system at the start. Like you you've got so little choice and so many points, and later on you're like, I haven't got enough points. I got so much choice. Yeah. I think I get battle rage this time around. Oh, good, I did. I do. So now I can hit things even better. I can use fury. Or whatever it's called during combat, uh, which means I can parry. Frenzy, well, you can frenzy, also... frenzy is still parry here. Yeah. Frenzy, yeah. I'm taking toughness too for 500 to bring me up to 50 toughness. Uh, mm, does that change the number? The does that change the number of wounds I have? Right, I get yeah, one so, more wound. So, yeah, if your toughness tends change, you get one more wound. Okay, so I'm fully and one, healed. And one more fatigue. Uh, and I think it'll do something with how badly I can get critical, but yeah, we'll work on it. James, what do you got for an outro? Uh, I am James, we got podcasts. That was another episode of Scion, the Scion Road Trade, the last Scion. Um, I will be back here next Thursday for Battletech and next Sunday, oh, sorry, sorry, Saturday for uh, for Rogue Trader. Um, I'm about to take a four day break from gaming having played five games in four days or played or run five games in four days um so yeah i am actually gonna leave this game now and go and take my kids to the park and actually get some sunlight uh work on my moon tan um but uh other than that not much else uh i will say that i started watching cursed this week finally um this is the frank miller adaptation of arthur the arthurian legend of nimue uh, I've got a friend of mine who is another, who's a big Arthurian legend fan, not as big as Arthur. I don't think anyone's as big as Arthur when it comes to the Arthurian legend stuff, given you've sure. names right, it, it, names right in there. But um, he was like, yeah, I think I might check it out. I'm, I'm really big on Arthurian legend. And I sort of said, look, this is cursed is to Arthurian legend as 300 is to the battle of Thermopylae. Wow. Um, yeah. It's, <laughs> it's an adaptation for sure. And it is very Frank Miller. You know, every time there's a fight, the screen gets splattered with blood. <laughs> um, but uh that's it yeah I, I, not much else going in my life painting modeling working from home it's the yeah, i'm living that, that living that corona life mm. listen in 12 to 18 months living that corona life is going to mean that you're an alcoholic <laughs> but for now we all know exactly what you mean Dave. Well, hey, my, my wife drinks so much more now than she used to. Like, especially when homeschooling was going on, she was like, she was a bottle a day, you know, and she hardly ever drinks. And this is, this is giving the fact that I don't drink at all. So whenever we go out, you know, she gets a drink because I'm always a designated driver. But yeah, she was like, she, she and wine found a new appreciation for each other. I, I agree. I've, I've started experimenting on my drinks and adding things to my rum. I discovered the magic of daiquiris, so. All right, I'm rank three now. I got a... uh, Forbidden Lore Xenos and uh, Common Lore Cronus Expanse. And I'm Coke and rum in the US much? Yes, Coke and rum yes. is very popular. 
Not with me, but it is popular. I enjoy coconut rums. Okay. I prefer root beer and rum. I haven't tried that. Try that. Coconut rum, very popular, James. Absolutely. Root beer and rum? You mean a dark and stormy? No, that's ginger beer, my friend. Uh -huh. Very different. Ginger beer is much sharper. I think, I think the, the default spirit drink that all the bogans in Australia drink is pretty much Jim Bean and Coke. So. Yeah, that's but the... that's nasty. That's nasty. <laughs> but that, that comes pre-packaged in a can. So, like... Around here, yeah. we believe that all Australians drink Fosters because it's Australian for beer. No, it's made no, in Australia. We, just, yeah. <laughs> we send the Fosters to the people the that drink States. that shit. Yeah. Yes. It's like, it's like mm -hmm. but isn't Budweiser the same in the US? Everyone thinks that they drink in the US and no one drinks it or something? No, yeah. people drink a lot of Budweiser in the US. Okay, no worries. Dave, what do you got? Uh... Hey everyone, thanks for watching, thanks for playing, thanks for doing all the stuff, James, as always. Um, so go buy my game, it's called Pieces of My Heart, it's on Steam. It, and if you do buy it, make sure you leave a review on Steam, because um, every review helps us out. Um, we have to like pass 100 reviews on Steam, and it's a quite difficult process to get to, because um, most people don't leave reviews, as it turns out, on Steam products. So. Or, or, or if adult, adult games on Steam probably as well, probably even, even, even a more limited market. <laughs> no, <laughs> it's the exact opposite because okay. most people leave like the meme reviews on adult games. So, you know, they'll lean like, like you know, oh, accidentally purchase this Lenny face, you know, shit like that. Like that, they'll leave those sorts of reviews. So uh, we need to get a little, uh, decent number of those and then we'll do all right. So, yeah. Thanks, guys. That's me. Pondo. I am Pondo or Pondo the Mad. You can catch me on YouTube or Twitch slash Pondo the Mad, or you can find me uh, on Sunday nights uh, on my own channel playing my Hunters of Ulver game, which is a 5e gestalt game in my own world setting. Uh, or you can find me Thursday nights with AP, uh, James, Cotton, and Rad playing Battletech. Um, next week will be the last episode for, I guess, a six week break, something like that. It'll be some time. Yeah. Yeah. We're going to fill the gap. So I'm guessing next week we're going to have brainstorm some ideas for that. But that's it for me. Uh, yeah. That's I it. Finally, finally at least got started the uh, lesser endeavor. <laughs> I didn't want to get done. Uh, friends at home, I'm going to be cutting the stream for a couple of seconds and then restarting it within the next minute and uh after i get soundwave and rad in here we'll be playing sea thieves so stick around if you want to and don't if you aren't have a good night